business? Like, what what are some of the the, the worst things? I guess that come from you know we've talked about it a lot, but sometimes you got to remind these guys yeah. the dangers that come from you know taking on the responsibility of someone else's child. Yeah, I mean, you're basically choosing to put yourself in a position of a cuckold because you're choosing to invest your time, effort, and resources into children that don't have your name, they don't have your DNA. There's no real benefit to it. I get that, you know, they tell men today, you, you do what's right, mm-hmm. right? But they tell women, you do what's right for you, girl. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's two different stories. So it's very common for guys to fall for the trap of the hot single mom, right? Um, she does all the right things when you meet her, of course, because, you know, they want to draw you in. Uh, and then you start diving down the rabbit hole of spending time with them. And then you start taking vacations with them. And, you know, I mentioned a trip down to Barbados with her and her kids. Um, and it just it just blows up. You're like, you know, you get to the point where you're like trapped somewhere. You're like, what the fuck am I doing? And how did I get myself into this? And yeah. why are these kids so disrespectful? And why don't they, you know, appreciate any things that you're doing? It's like you have responsibility to her and kids that aren't even yours, but with no authority. Yeah. So it's what like what is the upside to a guy so it's one of the red flags that i'm on you know my book on the chapter on red flags and why you want to be very careful with inviting single moms in your life well said yeah what was your awakening for this uh whole process here? Oh, you called in Tell space. Space. Oh, well, it's <laughs> funny, space. Man. yeah he talks about the video that he did that blew up and that was the women not to date and that was so i was in a relationship you know i i had dated my fair share of girls in like high school and college and things like that but i'd always i came into this stuff like I, I remember watching when I was a teenager, like mm. the VH1s, the pickup artist show. That yep. was my oh, first yeah. foray into this sort of stuff, w show. mystery, yeah. and everything like yeah. that. The two seasons, I was nuts. I was fascinated by it. So picking up girls and getting their attention was never really super, super hard. But I really struggled with the LTR game, keeping interest long term, and I became the plow horse over time. The most, you know, the, I had dated, I had three sort of major relationships in my twenties, and the one that when I that really brought me to the content was. Um, you know, got together. We were together two years and some change. We lived in New York at the time. We did the apartment and the dog. We talked about marriage and kids' names and all that stuff. And she had cre- a terrible, non-existent relationship with her biological father. So he had disowned her legally when he was, she was 13 or something like that. Oh, damn. And he was still involved. She had two other siblings, and she, he was still involved in their lives. And they weren't that much younger than her. So she was the adult. She was a firstborn. And I remember she would tell me things like, you're never allowed to ask me about my father. You're never allowed to have an opinion on it. You just need to shut the fuck up. Like, don't talk about that stuff. Like, okay. So me still being kind of plugged in, I'm Googling or searching how to be a good boyfriend to girls with daddy Uh, issues or whatever. (laughs) And I come across a video that's like three women to avoid dating. Like, oh, this guy's in a car, like bald head. Interesting. (laughs) First thing he goes like, don't date girls with daddy issues. And I'm like, right. Everything after that just takes off because it's like, this is the first time that someone had ever told me like you're allowed to have standards and you're not you don't have to put yourself through bullshit for a chick yeah and so dove down the rabbit hole man watched all of his stuff you know consume the content we were still together at the time and broke up maybe a month or two later and she moved out then february of 21 i called into his show um where he was doing it with aaron clary who was promoting like book of numbers at the time what's well, oh, my dad okay. yeah, yeah. yeah right? my, my boy dad. <laughs> yeah. so uh like you can watch that video if you type in like rich cooper before the train wreck i think it's episode like 94 mm-hmm. i mean i've almost got it down to the minute where i call in and i'm like i got one night for this chick you know what the hell do i do yeah, and yeah. uh you know the biggest awakening for me is that i got off the call and i looked around I was like all right i've I don't have a tribe of men. I don't have buddies around that I can call. I don't have guys in New York. I was in New York at the time and it was a prison. It was all during. Mm. And that night I was like, I'm joining the community. And so I've been, you know, in the community ever since. And and my thing was, I'm going to go out there and get on dating apps. I'm going to go out there and get the experience. I'm just going to go out there and put up shots. And, um, you know, we've just, we've always seen eye to eye on a lot of things as far as, you know, the tribe aspect and masculinity. And we've always just, we've always really worked off uh, well off one another. And, um, you know, I've, I've got I got canned from a a W two job back in May of twenty two because they actually found some of the tweets and some of the stuff I was doing with Rich and wow. they said oh like you're homophobic and transphobic oh God, and you go right against on. our guidelines and this How kind of dare shit you? and so you know, I talked to Rich and he's like look you got two options you can basically delete and scrub the internet of everything you've ever done with me and you can do all that you can go back to doing the 40 hour week whatever and i was making decent money i was making 120 130 nice. something like that well, nothing well, crazy what were you doing back it then? was like software sales software, software sales. like okay, account tech. management yeah, yeah okay. i was tech so okay. and everything was remote so it was easy mm-hmm. and i was living in florida so no income tax right so oh, nice and uh He's like, or you can just double down and tell them to go fuck themselves and like go into this thing head first. And that's what I did. So nice. 
so essentially like i i ditched the w2 gig essentially i work kind of with rich and for rich full time and uh we just developed a really great you know personal and business relationship over the last three years nice um no that's great and sometimes you got to be able to tell your job fuck off and fire your job because you know you can't even and that's what it's come to now where like you can't even have an opinion that's pro masculine or anything like that it's like everything they use the stupid buzz terms you literally just use totally anything that's pro masculine homophobic or transphobic or whatever and it's like mm-hmm. no you don't have to necessarily hate a group of people to want to go in and push your class of people if that makes sense but mm-hmm. i'm gonna ask you this though, you know, but, because i was last employed 2002 okay that's before screens that's before yeah. social media yeah. mm-hmm. like that's dating me obviously right mm-hmm. and you could have an opinion like you could sit down with your friends after work have a beer shoot the shit say something and it's fine yeah now you you know you got the internet oh, the yeah. trails the social media everything and there's always somebody yep. out there that wants to find a way to sort of get you fired yep. right yep let me let me teach this guy a lesson for voicing an opinion that i don't agree with it was somebody on my team that went behind my back and then reported me like right. up the chain to i'm HR. pretty sure that's what happened to me too with the yeah. government and it's, i came back yeah. like monday yeah. morning we, we were just down in texas we were doing a hog hunt and i mm-hmm. came back monday morning and hr was like hey like zoom meeting in five minutes it's just you <laughs> i'm like oh well i kind of know what this is gonna be yeah and that's it and i and i was like look like what about a package severance or like nah like as soon as we get off this call your shit's gonna shut off like you're done um that was that was it and so it was oh, they didn't even give you a chance to scrub your stuff oh, they didn't even give me a chance to defend myself and say oh, like oh wow. well do i get a chance to saying, explain man, you can't say shit anymore yeah they want to silence you right yeah i actually i think what it got i retweeted a like a video of alan roberts shout out to alan roberts from mfing ceo mm-hmm. coo and he was talking about oh like if you talk around if you're talking about shit like in front of my kids you better be ready to like go meet the lord or something like that okay. Whatever. And not even something that i had said either way um and somebody took that and to go oh we don't feel safe with him working here anymore and shit like that and they're just like you're gone you're sensationalizing done. yeah that was yeah. it i it mean was, the was term done. free speech isn't really anymore no that's been gone a long time no. and twitter yeah. x so to speak i think it's a trap like i said before to you yeah. and other people whatever you tweet nowadays can be used against you in the future yeah. look, look at totally look at tate it's like it's a trap in 